and we are live what is up everyone welcome back to hack smarter live with me tyler i am your host and streaming at a rather different time than what i normally do because i took this week off from pto so i have this entire week off from work and really my only hobbies are hanging out with my kids and my kids are at school so here i am i figured let's let's take an hour maybe two hours this morning and finish the hack the box machine i started a few days ago and if we finish that Let's dive into something new. So welcome. It is good to have you here. Didn't had no idea who would actually join because I almost never stream at this time because like I said before, usually I'm working my my real job and streaming. I don't make any money from this. So this is usually like my late night hobby. But here we go. I'm just getting all the chat pulled up, making sure I'm not <clears throat> missing anything. We are streaming on LinkedIn and Twitch and YouTube. And I got my <clears throat> sweet hacking cat. I don't know if you guys can see him. Hopefully you can see him okay. All right, so he's going to help us do some hacking. Every hacker needs an all-black uh, cat. Otherwise, you're not a true hacker. It's kind of like wearing a hoodie. What we will do, making sure everything's good, which it looks like it is, I will share my screen, and let's go ahead and dive into things. <clears throat> if I could get my, my voice right, yo, I apparently haven't been up long enough. I have to get up at the same time no matter what because I bring my kids to school, so... Uh, but I haven't talked enough, so now my voice is still a little bit rough, but we will work our way through it. We are going to do Parrot OS once again. I, no really preference between this and Kali. Just like to change it up, and I like the way Parrot looks. It just looks like a cool OS. And we are going to do some more to hack the box. And the machine that we were working on before was the Love Machine. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is see if it's booted up let's go ahead and spawn the machine and while that spawns let's get ourselves on the vpn let me turn off desktop audio pseudo open vpn i think it's lab right okay and while we get everything booted up machine is spawning let's review our notes from last time so if you're new to my stream, <clears throat> one thing you'll notice that's probably different between me and some of the other streamers you've seen or content creators is I don't prepare this ahead of time. So when I work through a machine, it's me working through it live. It's not me doing it myself and then coming back and doing it in 20 minutes. It's all my frustrations, all the rabbit holes I fall into, and I want this to be kind of like a team. So I don't know if any of you guys were at DEF CON, but I went to DEF CON for the first time this past summer, and my favorite part of DEF CON definitely wasn't waiting in lines, but my favorite part of DEF CON was the chill out room. So I don't know if you guys remember the chill out room, but the chill out room was a place where like dual core reform, there's always music going on, all tables set up. And I remember sitting in the chill out room with a few people at a table working on different CTFs, kind of working through it together, all had our computers out, seeing if we could figure it out. So that's what I want this to be like. We're in the my basement, which is now gonna be the, the DEF CON chill out room until the next DEF CON. And we are working through some machines together. My only thing I ask is don't look at a walkthrough. I don't want big spoilers, but if you're working through this live alongside of me and you notice something I didn't notice, feel free to let me know in the chat and I will dig down into that as well. So hopefully that makes sense. And as usual, if you guys have any questions about career stuff or pen testing or cybersecurity, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer questions as we work our way through this. I will say on on uh, LinkedIn, for some reason, I have to refresh the page to see the comments every time I do this. So if you're on LinkedIn and you leave a comment and I don't see it right away, just give it a couple of minutes. I'll refresh the page and make sure I'm not missing anything. Your Twitch comment should show directly up on the screen. YouTube's on this screen. So the only confusing thing about streaming to three different platforms is I have to try to keep all the chat clear in my head. But so far, so good. So if we look at what we have so far, Let's close validation. Here's love. So we spent uh, the first stream on this love machine, which I think the recording for this actually just released this morning, part one, where we did all this enumeration. So if you missed that, you can watch the full recording of part one of the love machine on my uh, YouTube channel. But we have our to-do list. We started going through this, and we found SQL injection. And I don't actually think this was like an intentional path because I was using SQL map and I was able to actually dump hashes, but it was time-based and taking a long time, if you guys remember, right? So I'm actually very curious when we are done with the machine, I want to do some uh, post-poning research, I totally just made that term up, but I want to look at like 
OXDF. He always has really good walkthroughs. And just see, how did he approach this? Did he discover SQL injection? Did he do anything with this? Because when I saw this voiding system, I always make it to do this. So one of the things I said is, hey, let's try SQL injection. And this is what I did. I did one uh, uh, comment thingy. Don't know why I'm blanking on what that's actually called. <laughs> It's a downside of streaming, but I got a weird error. So then we threw SQL map at it and I was able to actually dump the database. And I actually think I was able to read files. Now remember, this is a Windows machine. So I was reading the Etsy hosts on Windows, but it was just taking too long to go back. So I actually think I can, whoever this user is that's doing the SQL uh, syntax, I think they have the file permission because I'm quite certain I was able to read files there. Yeah, it's a quote, AZ Cowboy one. <laughs> Uh, and then we discovered some images type stuff. We found the admin page. We couldn't log into it, but we did discover username enumeration. And what I mean by that is if we did, I think it was admin or administrator, we could see that we got a password. And actually offline, after the stream was done last time, a couple of days ago, I let SQL map continue to run just in the background. And then I checked the hash. I actually had the admin hash, but I wasn't able to crack it with Hashcat and some of those standard word lists. So once again, I don't think that is the, the way in, but what's unique about this voting system is there is authenticated RCE when we're looking at it. So I thought, hey, use SQL map to dump the hash of the admin user, crack the admin hash with Hashcat, log in as an admin and do authenticated RCE. That was my plan, but you guys told me it was a rabbit hole. So I do think it's a rabbit hole. And once again, I don't know if that's intentional, unintentional, we'll find out when we are done. Here's our username enumeration. We found these plugins and I said, hey, if I get stuck, we'll come back and research these to see if there's any volumes there. We have this con.php. This is also what I try to read with uh, the SQL injection, but I couldn't read it for some reason. Either con.php or session.php might have some creds. And if we're looking like at con.php, it probably has SQL creds, but wasn't able to read that. Let's see. So what's this? Just a, oh, a version of admin LTE. Okay. And then I had this, don't forget to add staging. So we kind of finished a lot of this. This is from the my or from SQL map. You can see we have PHP my admin and vote system. I was trying to enumerate both of those, but like I said before, it takes a really long time because it's time-based SQL injection. We have SMB here, and we will get into 443. I'm guessing with the staging.love, this is gonna be the way in, but let's not skip our enumeration. So let's jump next into SMB. And while I'm doing that, let me just look over at the comments, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, John Sword said, out of curiosity, have you done the hack the box pen tester path? If so, what were your thoughts on it? Good question. So I have done about, I think 80% of the hack the box pen tester path. And so far, I think it's really excellent stuff. Some of the best training that's out there, very affordable. And uh, I really used it to prep for the OSCP. It was much better prep for me for the OSCP than anything Offsec released in their, you know, $1,600 90-day course. It's just silly, the price tag on that. Hack the Box Academy, much more affordable, much better training. I don't think I'll do the cert myself simply because I'm already a pen tester. So I'm not really out there trying to get certs. If I'm doing research, I want to get CVEs, but I still think the cert would be beneficial and the path itself, the training is really good. The only, the only module I don't like, and for those of you who have done Hack the Box Academy, you can sound off if I'm wrong, but the password attacks module, oh my goodness. Some of the password attack module guys, you have to sit there for an hour plus just brute forcing which in my opinion, once you teach someone the syntax of how to brute force or how to make a custom password list, there is, there's really no use to making them sit and stare at their screen while the brute force happens. Now I get it like, oh, it's more realistic. In the real world, it takes longer to do that. Yo, in the real world, I'm using a machine usually in the cloud to crack password hashes and I'm letting it run all day and I'm getting paid well to do it, all right? So if I'm just learning the syntax of how to crack hashes and do brute force attacks, there isn't, just put the password at the top of the word list. Once the user learns the syntax, let them find it in less than 10 minutes, in my opinion. No use of sitting there for an hour staring at your dang screen while you uh, while you do that. Uh, Prizzy Bilak, if I'm saying your, word, or your name right, said, love your content. Thank you, my friend. Nixon said, finally cut a stream of yours live. Been following you for a few months now. Couldn't because of a time zone difference. Dropped a Twitch follow. Thank you. Yeah, the time zone difference is probably strange. Usually I stream late at night, but I was sharing before I took this week off from PTO. And really, my only hobby is hanging out with my kids. 
and they're in school right now. So I'm like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on stream and let's do some, a little bit of hacking. Justin says, so the lesson was good, just too much time for it then? Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, it's probably worth going through the password attack module. What you could do if you don't want to wait for all the <coughs> brute forcing, the content itself is really good. So if you just read through the content and do the labs, you'll be solid. But if you do want to do the CPTS, like the cert, you have to 100% that path to even take the cert. So if you're going to take the cert, you do have to do the path. And there is, there really is lessons to be learned when you struggle through something like that. I'm gonna jump over to LinkedIn, make sure I'm not missing anything. Hello, Nikwa, if I'm saying that right, Hamza and Richard and Benjamin. Good to have all of you sounding off in the chat. Thank you guys for joining me. Once again, we are working through the love machine on Hack the Box <clears throat> and we will uh, keep moving. I'll answer, let's see, one more question. John's Nord says, so how would you say it compares or contrasts to TCM content? Dude, TCM is king. Uh, TCM is a lot more approachable. And here's kind of my journey with TCM security. In 2020 is when I really got into IT and I wanted to get into pen testing. Didn't know the path there. Tried to do, try hack me, tried to do hack the box. And like, I could slowly work my way through machines, but <clears throat> things didn't like click in my head how it all worked together. I was on Reddit when I wanted to get the OSCP and saw people recommend this dude called the Cyber Mentor, you know, of course, Heath Adams, and TCM Security. I bought his course on uh, practical ethical hacking or whatever his course is called. And I did that entire course. And after I did that course, everything really did start to click. So even if you look at my notes here, guys, like all these notes, they're from TCM Security. Almost all of these notes are from them. So, uh, TCM is awesome. Would highly recommend their academy. And uh, Heath is a cool dude. I actually got to interview him on Twitch. You can actually find my interview with Heath on my YouTube page, as well as with Zach Hill from TCM. I've interviewed both of them uh, on, on YouTube. So you can check out those interviews. Really solid people, really solid training. Hopefully that helps. But okay, we have SMB open. Now when SMB is open, it all depends on what we're able to get access to on whether or not we're gonna be able to enumerate. When it comes to an SMB to-do list, Really what we're looking for first is can we connect to things with no, like null shares? Is there null, I think it's better, null authentication. Can we essentially, ah, can we essentially connect to the SMB share without using a password? And so one easy way to check that. First, let me see if I have everything configured right here. If we ping, okay. And if we ping love.hackthebox, okay, cool. So I believe it's SM, SMB client dash L. I'm going totally off memory, guys, so I might mess this up. Love.hack the box like that. We'll just do like anonymous. Okay, so that tells us it is not enabled. If it was enabled, we'd be able to see some information there. So I'm just gonna grab that. Stop dropping down there. Fine, I'll go this way. Grab that for our notes. Oh my goodness. Don't do that to me, screenshot tool. <laughs> That's gonna drive me crazy. We'll do that, pull our notes up here, and we'll say anonymous authentication not allowed. If we get creds, we can come back and check this. That's about the extent. If we had uh, anonymous authentication, we could try like Enum for Linux, tools like that, but I don't think it's gonna be helpful without it being on AD and without it being anonymous authentication. So now we are at enumerating another web port, HTTP or HTTPS to be specific. And you can see in the SSL cert, we have a V host here, staging.love.hackthebox. Now the way to access that is very easy. We're just gonna add it to our Etsy hosts. So we'll go like this, <clears throat> staging. I have something broken with my, uh, my nano, the, the backspace key doesn't work. I don't know what I did to uh, to break it. <clears throat> so we'll do sudo pluma Etsy host and staging.love.hackthebox like that. Okay, we have that, oops. And before we even start enumerating it, I like to make it to do this just like we did with HTTP. 
So I was sharing this when we were first enumerating this. When I come across any service, I like to make a to-do list before I even start enumerating because it's easy to get distracted by rabbit holes, especially if you're studying for something like the OSCP, which is notorious for that, where if you have a to-do list, you have something you can go back to when you get stuck and say, hey, I actually completely forgot to check that. And this has saved me countless times on CTF machines and uh, on the OSCP in particular from getting lost in a rabbit hole. <clears throat> Looking over at the chat, Regine said, hey, Tyler, I might need to change the stream title from THM to Hack the Box, I guess. No? Oh, yeah, I didn't realize it still says Try Hack Me. Yes, we're doing Hack the Box. Good call. Uh, I can't change it easily. So here's the downside of what I'm doing. A lot of people use Restream.io to do multi-streaming, but to stream in full HD without a watermark costs $50 a month to multiple platforms. I have a way of doing it with just OBS on here. And so with just OBS, completely free, I'm streaming in full HD to three different platforms, but it does limit some of the modifications I can do after I've gone live. So thank you for calling that out. Next time I jump on stream, I'll make sure I fix that. Make sure I'm not missing anything on LinkedIn. What up, LinkedIn people? Okay, cool. Nothing. Twitch is good. YouTube. Um, is it, is it normal for rhinos like this? I'll hack the box machines. I'm not working today. So I am not, uh, I am not rhino security today. I, uh, took this week off from PTO. So this is me on my own time. Am not clocked in, am not working, but yeah, dude, I, uh, I took PTO to stream. I know I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, Tyler question. So when researchers at rhino find CVEs, is this during engagements or in the off time? So I want to be careful how I speak on Rhino because I'm, of course, not like an official Rhino rep. But I can say like at Rhino, what we do is we're often scheduled for assessments or pen tests. And then if we're in between pen tests, we'll be scheduled for maybe two or three days of research time. And Rhino gives us that time to do research. That's when we have as much freedom as we want to discover CVEs, to do continual learning, to do continual development. So we have that built into our schedule in a pretty healthy way. And so we're able to do CVE hunting and stuff while we're like on the clock, so to speak, for Rhino. And if you want to do it in off hours, that's fine, totally up to you. But there's never any expectation at Rhino to work evenings or weekends. They're very um, focused on a work-life health balance, which is awesome. <clears throat> all right, I think I'm hitting all the questions. Let's see, someone said, I see me running Parrot. What distro is next? I have no idea, dude. I was reading about Predator. I, I do like Parrot. I like Parrot and Cali. I like the way Parrot looks. All right. Okay, let's let's keep uh, going going through things. As I said before, y'all, if you are tuning in, I'm not working today. <laughs> this is me having fun is, is sitting on stream and hacking stuff. Uh, we have a few people joining on, on LinkedIn. Someone's joining from Haiti. That's awesome. Represent Haiti. Cool. Someone else said, just join. What do you work on today? We're doing the love machine on Hack the Box. But okay, here's our to-do list on port HTTP, really S, I guess, if we make it accurate. So let's start our scans, and then we'll begin some enumeration. So I'm going to call this tab GoBusterDir, and we'll do GoBusterDir.uStaging.love.HackTheBox in our word list. Directory list 2.3 medium. And we'll do, oh, we won't even do vhost. Honestly, this is a vhost, so I'm not going to check vhost. We can do nikto, though. <clears throat> Whoops. Nikto dash h staging dot love dot hack the box. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to do that. Just going to want that. So I'm going to fix dir as well, I think. Because right now it's trying to enumerate port 80. That'll put it on port 443. And you can see we're getting a certificate error. I think, is it K? K, no, that's what it is in curl. Oh, no, no, this is correct. We're getting a different error message. So it says it returns a status code that matches the provided options length 307. To fix that, we can do exclude length, if my memory serves me correct, 307. There we go. All right, we got GoBuster going. We got Nikto going. Looking at my to-do list. We have browse the website, check the source code, and check robots.txt. So actually, before we do that, let me get another tab open. I'm going to pull it over here, and we'll call this one Kato, and we'll get our friend Kato pulled up for some web app pen testing. 
it looks like I didn't create a project for this. So let's go ahead and create a part project. We'll call it love hack the box. And let's get our system pulled up. Hello, robot hacker friend. This is like a fork of chat GPT. It is chat GPT, but it is made in such a way that it's less limited on the questions that will answer for us. So a lot more helpful there. And we'll get this of course pulled up. I'm going to close out of hack the box for now. We'll go to HP staging dot love dot hack the box, accept the errors. And we don't have permission to access it. So I bet there's going to be a, another page that we will check out while our scan runs. While our scan runs, it looks like it's not finding anything yet. We may have to do some more enumeration. I'll look over at the chat. What's everybody talking about? Yo, are you doing the Advent of Cyber Live? Yes, I am, Hamza. Thanks for asking. Not only am I doing Advent of Cyber Live, or at least my plan is to do it every day, I am one of the official, uh, I don't know if influencer, I think that's what they call it. I don't think I'm big enough to be an influencer. I don't know who I'm influencing. But I am one of the official people making like one of the walkthroughs for one of the rooms. So when you go through Avenue of Cyber, it's beginner friendly. And so for every day, there's like an official walkthrough for that room. I am doing one of the rooms on, on web app attack. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But in addition to that, I will also be streaming as I work my way through all the other rooms. So that'll be a lot of fun. Sugfault said, hey, I want to become a pen tester. I'm 23. Is it too late to become a pen tester? No, dude, I didn't even... Uh, I didn't even switch to IT, bro, until I was 20... 28 years old so and i'm i'm 30 now so i haven't been in it that long so no it, 23 is definitely not too young dude i wasn't even it till i was 28 you got plenty of time my friend whoops did not mean to open that I meant to open up linkedin over here like i said if you're on linkedin i have to refresh my page every time to see the comments which is annoying looking at twitch so I'm not working, so I'm going to do fun work. Yep, that's me. It's been a long while here, I promise. What up, Pluto? All right, well, I'm not finding anything on here, but I'm pretty sure there's stuff here. Do I need to use a different word list? Let's let's find out. Let's go to this. I'm just going to do, like, uploads. Check some different random things. Admin test is it staging or is it stagings maybe i have it wrong hold up let's look at our notes no it's staging.love.hackthebox that's definitely what i put in yeah so red hot chili hacker just said on twitch which you guys should see at least the twitch chat pulls up my screen it says he switched to cyber when he was 27 now he's 29 it's never too late i agree <laughs> Even older than that, like 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever, dude. Switch it anytime. Not quite sure what I need to be looking for on this. We might have to look at guided mode, but we'll enumerate my sequel. I'm just quite certain this is the way in based on comments um, from the last stream. So there's 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 probably some directory here. Let's check let's check robots.txt, I guess. Agent said, yeah, and 40s are not letting that stop me. That's awesome, dude. Keep up the work. No robots.txt either. Nothing on staging. Well, that's strange. Let's let that do its thing. Is Nikto's probably not finding anything. Goldbuster doesn't have anything. Okay, well, we can check out MySQL, but I'm almost certain we're not going to be able to hit MySQL. Oh, yeah, look at this. Our host is not able to connect to this MariahDB server. We do know it's a MariahDB server, so that is some um, information and numeration that we would report to a client. You don't want to be revealing that type of information to a potential attacker. But it's probably not going to do anything for us right now. There's probably not going to be an unauthenticated attack that we can do on it. So I am like 99% certain it's going to be this port right here because people told me last time my cool SQL injection I found is a rabbit hole. <clears throat> but I'm not quite sure what, <laughs> what to even check here. So let me show you guys a cool feature on Hack the Box if you haven't discovered it. If we go to our love machine... 
oh, this one doesn't have adventure mode. Or it doesn't have uh, guided mode. Guided mode makes it a little more like try hack me. What we may do, because I don't want to just stare at my screen this entire time, is let's look at the walkthrough just until like I figure out what port it's looking for. Don't look, don't look, don't look. We only want to get to the stuff that we don't know. We already know all this stuff. This is everything that I did myself on the last stream. <laughs> okay, foothold. What does he say? Oh, wait, you got the credentials for admin somehow? Oh, let me back up. Wait, ours isn't working. He's just at staging.love.hackthebox. I'm getting permission denied. I wonder if I have to reset my machine. Maybe that's actually the issue. I don't think this would, does this matter? Oh shoot, no, it's just not on port 443. <laughs> okay, that's confusing. I assume we'd had to do port 443 since it was in, you know, the SSL cert name. But I guess that you don't have to. It would still exist on port 80. So, okay, that's all I was missing. Let me go ahead and, and close that out so we don't accidentally see more stuff. And that, my friends, is how you use a walkthrough, right? Just look until we're no longer stuck, and then we will we will check that out. So we have this free file scanner. Let's get Cato pulled up and kind of enumerate what is going on here. But let's also take this for our notes. I'm going to go like this. Pull up our notes here. And we'll keep this in port 80. And we'll just call it staging.love.hackthebox. So we know we're enumerating that. And then we could actually redo all these scans or at least get them running while we enumerate manually. Let's take the HTTPS off of this. And then actually we also need to do this. I'm not sure what length we'll need to exclude. Okay, no length. We'll just let GoBuster run in the background while we manually enumerate. And I'll t pause real quick for questions. What do we got in comments? <clears throat> Make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. Nothing on LinkedIn that I'm missing. YouTube. Lots of chat. Haircut Fish. What up, Haircut Fish? You're from Simply CyberCon, if I remember right. Good to have you here. Yeah, dude, start streaming. Like, when I started streaming, the I think the biggest holdup to streaming first is like, just getting comfortable talking uh, to no one, right? Looking at your camera, talking, and at least for me, so not you don't have to do it the way I do it, but the way I do it is going through it blind. I have not done this machine ahead of time. So trying to talk coherently, take notes, and teach and learn myself, it is a lot more difficult than it looks, like trying to balance all these things. And it's why I, not sometimes, often will miss very obvious things or honestly just forget words while I'm talking that I do not forget when I'm offline. There is something about having a camera on you, knowing that you're talking to people that makes it a little more difficult. So once you get past that, it's like, just do it. So when I started streaming, if you go back on my YouTube page and go back to my first videos, I was just working in IT support, but I wanted to get into pen testing, but I realized I had no pen testing experience. I live in a small rural community, didn't know how to get that experience. So I thought, I'm just going to start making YouTube videos and show my learning process, going through Try Hack Me and Hack the Box and doing it live, making silly mistakes, stumbling my way through it, but showing any future employer that, yes, I am not a pen tester yet, but I can figure it out. And I'm showing you through my streams, like here's my troubleshooting process. Here's how I approach a machine that I'm not familiar with. And it worked. So I really do think live streaming, writing blogs, super helpful things, especially if you want to get into the field or just grow in the field. It has helped me grow myself uh, personally and helped me meet some cool people. I mean, it's through streaming that I've met people like Heath Adams and Zach Hill and Matt Kiley and uh, Network Chuck. I hopefully am going to have a collab with him in the in the future. And, and Jerry from Simply Cyber and my friend Amoeba Man from Try Hack Me. Like all these cool people I, I've met purely through streaming and creating content. Is this the same machine as last week's stream? Yeah, you're right. It is. Okay. 
looking over at Twitch, Nixon said, I tend to up in rabbit holes when I take notes, really writing two to three lines often. I feel like my note taking is pretty inefficient and might lose me time. Any advice on how to make it better? You know, that's a good question. Um, I usually take very small notes just to keep things clear. I'm not taking real detailed things. But, yeah, I guess I'm not... I don't really have specific advice. I think every person is different. Like the way I take notes doesn't work for everyone. So part of it is just do enough machines to figure out what it takes for you to take good notes. I think you recognize that you're inefficient right now. So just recognizing that is already a win. So it's asking yourself, what can I do differently? Like, how can I trim this down? How can I make a more standard to do this when I approach these different services would be a, a good, a good place to start. Did you switch to Parrot OS? Yeah, yeah, just like what John said. I, I am not tied to any distro. So at work, like in my legit pen testing job, I use Ubuntu. Like I have Ubuntu as my main OS, and then I'll use both Kali and, and uh, Parrot OS and VMs if needed. But my main OS is just Ubuntu with hacking tools installed. And then on this computer, my personal computer, it's Parrot and Kali. I switch between them just whatever I feel like doing, and I've been on a Parrot kick lately. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead. I think I've hit most of the questions. Let's let's go through some of what's going on here. So we have a free file scanner, which already makes me think file upload attacks. FFS will scan your files for recognized malware signatures. Our purpose is to provide an easy online file scanner to protect the internet folks from well-known malware viruses and worms. We're not live yet. Please subscribe. I don't know if this does anything. That's not a real email. Don't email it. Oh, I meant to do that as my email. Turn this on, hit submit. And I don't think it actually goes anywhere. Oh, I don't have a, let's install the rendering engine. John said, in your pen testing engagements, do you have a checklist for all the screenshots you need? If so, is it publicly available? Do not have a checklist, but generally when it comes to pen testing, you want to be able to demonstrate to the client step-by-step -step on how to exploit whatever exploit you found. So if I find stored cross-site scripting, I'm going to show them, hey, log into this account if it's dependent on an account, go to this portal with the URL, use this specific payload to bypass whatever WAF might be in place or whatever uh, encoding might be in place. I'll include the payload there. I'll include a screenshot of me using burp capturing the payload and then click this link or when you go to the page it triggers i'll include a screenshot of it being triggered so when it comes to a pen test report it's just making it very clear how can you allow a semi-technical person remember they're not a pen tester but they they are semi-technical how can you help them step by step to reproduce your attack as a pen tester the value you add to a client isn't look i'm elite hacker the value you add to a client is showing them some flaws in their system but also helping them reproduce it on their end. If the client cannot reproduce your vulnerability, they cannot fix the vulnerability. So it's not about being an elite hacker, it's about being helpful and also understanding the business side of whatever they are doing. Sometimes there's business risks that are associated, they accept the risks. So there, it's a lot more of a holistic environment than just like a CTF. On the OSAP, that's where you really want to, you know, know what to take screenshots of because you'll fail if you don't take screenshots of the right things. Okay, yeah, so I don't think this this doesn't do anything. Yeah, we don't get anything back. All right. So I'm guessing there's going to be a directory we can go to. Still no directory. What am I missing? What do we have in the page source? Do we have anything interesting here? Oh, beta.php. So we see that in the page source. Nothing else there. And while beta loads, is there a robots.txt? Oh, you know, it'd be a good idea to turn off Kato when I do stuff. No robots.txt, but we do have this beta. So let's check out this beta page. Specify the file URL. So this already looks like to me like SSRF, server side request forgery, which with server side request forgery, we can do file reads. We might be able to get a shell. We can scan the internal ports. I see this engagement somewhat often, not like full file read, but I've seen it quite a few times to get SSRF and I'm able to scan ports internally that are open on the, on the, behind the firewall, right? Because SSRF is the machine 
you're getting the machine to do stuff. So when I scan stuff, it's the machine doing it coming from a trusted host. So then you're able to kind of pivot into the internal environment a little bit. And here's kind of a spoiler. When I do Advent of Cyber, my whole day is about SSRF. So that's fun. And I'm, I don't know if this is going to be SSRF for sure, but it looks like it. First, let's just test. One good way to test SSRF is, hey, can we get a call back on our own machine? Echo, hello. Text sudo python 3.m server 80. And I don't actually know my IP 10.10.14.10. Okay, that's easy to remember. And if we pull up Kato, we'll turn this on and we'll do 10.10.14.10 text, scan file, send it to replay, hit send. Curious if we have any information about it there. But you can see we have we have a hit here. So it is reaching out to us. And so we very well might be able to abuse that. Let's go ahead and grab that. We'll copy it and drop it into our notes. Beta.php. Possible SSRF. But in this case, I mean, it looks like intended functionality. So just because you get a callback doesn't mean it's automatically SSRF. Something like this would be intended functionality. It's asking us for a URL. So it only matters is can we abuse this intended functionality? And there's a few things we can try. Actually, we get Cato pulled back up. So our URL encoding it. What if we do something like localhost And I think I have to URL encode it. Oh, let's make a new workflow. I haven't made one on here apparently. Um, where the heck is a workflow? Oh, it's convert. New workflow, and we will put our convert up here. And all we're gonna do is encode URL. And very simple, we're just gonna connect these guys. Like that, and we will call it URL. <coughs> All right, now if we go to replay here. URL encode that, hit send. Okay, well I guess it's it would be blind SSRF because it doesn't tell us if anything's open, right? Oh, not found, requested URL is not found on the server. How about if we do just local host. So if we can hit local host, then we know SSRF is possible. Okay, so we didn't get the same error. So it does seem it's scanning itself. Why is it signing to start your session? What? Why does it give me the voting system stuff? Does it do it here too? Oh shoot, it's echoed out. Oh, so we do have, it's not blind SSRF. We can actually see it. We see hello there, that's my file. So the question is how is this encoded in here? There's a bunch of things we might be able to do. Server side template injection. Um, actually curious, this won't be the way in, but I always like to test if there's stored cross-site scripting. So if we do uh, very basic cross-site scripting payload, if I can type. Oh, that's actually gonna mess it up because of encoding. Let's just do pluma um, access.test. No escaping, no trying to hide stuff. It, I see it's rendering that, so I'm just curious now if it will render that payload. Haha, <clears throat> <laughs> look at that. So we actually do have stored cross-site scripting. This is something I always check on engagements because it's a really good find. If you can get cross-site scripting, it's often undervalued, but 
with cross-site scripting, with JavaScript, I can do anything the victim can do. So if I'm able to get cross-site scripting on an admin, I can do privilege escalation. I can do like, I can take control of the app. So we have here unauthenticated stored cross-site scripting. It's stored because it's actually getting stored on the page. Now it'd be a little harder to attack someone with this because I don't, I'm guessing if you refresh it, it doesn't stay. But we do have some stored, maybe reflected based on how it's handling that. But we do have cross-site scripting and I actually want to put that as a finding, although it's not gonna be for the box. Good notes, and this is stuff you should test even in a when it's not gonna be legit because these are the things you test in the real world. This would give you a good bug bounty. I've made about, uh, I think the the one time I found, I don't do bug bounties very often. The one time I did do one and I found cross-site scripting, they, they paid me like $400. So it's a decent find for stuff like that. So we'll just say stored X success. And the reason I say it's probably not the way forward on this machine is because it's a client side attack. I doubt they have a bot emulating an admin that's going to this page and clicking it. Uh, let me check out the comments because I know it's been a second. Go over to LinkedIn, refresh since I can't see comments till I refresh LinkedIn. What's up everybody? Just everybody saying hi. Good to have you guys here. Looking over at YouTube. SQL injections, haircut fish. Yeah, we'll check that. Nahum Pro said, I do notes fairly similar to yours, but I prefer to do my notes per engagement a lot more like John Hammond's in a more timeline -less manner per machine network. Makes sense. Then I come to reporting phase, it's a lot easier. Oh, yeah. So for those who do pen testing, like here's what I did when I got into pen testing and this served for me well. I hack. So generally, I work 8 to 5, right? If I'm on an active engagement, I will hack from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., of course, take a lunch and all that good stuff. And then I dedicate 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. to just doing reporting every single day. And the reason for that is, I don't know about you guys, but even if it's a CTF, when I'm staring at the same thing all day, there's things I'm missing and I just get mental fatigue. So by four o'clock, yo, I can't keep looking at this website. There's gonna be volumes there, but I can't see them because I, I'm in the tunnel vision, so I need to step away from it. But I can still write. And so from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I work on my report, and then we get a full day for reporting at Rhino. When it comes to my reporting day, it's just a matter of fixing typos and, and throwing it in QA. Like, my report is done because I spend an hour every single day working on it. It makes it a lot less stressful on reporting day, and it helps you make sure like all the bones I found that day, I'm gonna add them to report the same day. So then like five days later, six, seven days later, I don't have to go back and figure out, wait, how did I exploit that again? Because I'm adding it to the report the same day I found it. I'm telling you guys, pro tip if you get into pen testing, I don't know too many people who do that. It works really well for me. And uh, I think it works well for everyone, but everyone just doesn't do it. Do it, like spend an hour every day working on your report. You can thank me later. Huh, okay. Let's, we have stored cross-site scripting, that's cool. So we know things are being reflected. I'm also curious now, what if I do Pluma? A basic server-side template injection thing. Okay, so we don't have server-side template injection. But we do have cross-site scripting. And I bet, let's do, uh, if we do something like, oh yeah, so we are reading it, guys. So this is index.php from port 80. That's why the voting system is coming up. We do, we can read index.php. That's huge. If this is an engagement, I'd be freaking out right now because this is, we get some really juicy stuff out of this. See it right there. So then we had like okay, that may have been in a different folder. It was includes. So what if I do okay, we didn't get it there. But we also didn't get an error, so we know it's hitting it. Okay. Warning. Includes fail to open stream, no such file or directory. So now we have we actually have full uh 
uh, directory listing here. Let's take a screenshot of that because that might come up handy as we enumerate things. Drop that in our notes. Not directory listing, I should say directory path. I misspoke. What up, Zach? Zach said, hey, my Security Plus exam later today. Dude, Zach, let us know how it goes, dude. Good luck on that. I took Security Plus about two years ago. It is a solid exam, so good luck, man. You'll have fun. Have I played the machine hospital already? I don't know. I don't think so. I'll check it out. What screenshot tool am I using? Light shot. I'm using light shot. Light shot's only for Windows though. Green shot is what I use on my work computer. I was saying before my main OS for work is Ubuntu. So on Ubuntu, I use green shot. On Windows, I use light shot. It's a billion times better than the snipping tool and honestly better than every other screenshot tool I've worked with. Even things like Snagit that are paid for. This is better. It's simple, it's to the point, and it has all the same functionality. It's what I use for pen test reports as well. Okay, so we have this. OMRS, that's the voting system, right? I'm almost certain that's like shorthand for the voting system. Uh, why DuckDuckGo? Okay, hold up. We need to fix that. Well, I'll just use Chrome for now. OMRS voting system exploit. Yeah, okay. That is the name of the voting system. What? Unauthenticated. No way. How do you upload to admin without authentication? I know I didn't see this before. Do we actually have this? Uh, so it's this is the vulnerable code is sessions dot session dot PHP. That's what I'm trying to look and I'm not seeing it. Um, but just for a second, if we look at this, this is our directory. Includes slash session dot PHP. We might want to come back to this. Let me just grab this. I'm going to keep doing my SSRF thing because it seems like SSRF is the way to abuse this, but There might be some type of unauthenticated RCE there. They say that's the vulnerable code. Is there no authentication on the upload process? Okay, now I actually wanna try this. So how would we do this? We're doing a post request to admin slash candidates add.php, we could really just use the same information and replace it with ours for uh, POC. So if I just do like <clears throat> literally going to copy this, but update the information a little bit. Okay. I requested didn't understand it. I do something wrong here. No, we'll come back to it. I, I, SSRF is cooler to me, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be SSRF. Can we do, actually, let's do a little bit of research here. I'm more used to SSRF on, on Linux. So with Windows, I think if we try to do like the file stuff, it's a little bit different. Let's find out. <clears throat> so that's what I was thinking, but that of course is only gonna work on Windows, but we could do file, 
like win.any type stuff. There's Gopher, SMTP. That's WAF. We don't need to worry about that. We could try. Okay. I see you. That would be a fun thing to try. So what it's saying to do here is we have this already pulled up. So if we do something like 10.10.14.10 test.txt and then who am I? We're trying to in inject RCE into that beast. Error response, file not found, nothing matches the given URI. So that's not gonna work. <clears throat> That'd be an easy win. Check that out. We could check out SSRF map as well. It seemed to be a cool tool when I was trying to play with it before. Let's actually try that. I think I might have it on this computer. Okay, I don't have locate. That's fine. I'm actually, it's probably not on here. Let's go here, grab this. SSRF map, Python 3. Okay, so what we need to do <clears throat> is just get the data. So if we go back to Cato, oh, whoops. Come on, go out of the way. Thank you. And it's the file parameter. So now if we do Python 3 dash R request dot text file parameter and M we could just try to read files. I think if we do just do read files, it will try to read some default files. And we could also try uh, interacting with the SQL database via SSRF would be an interesting thing. Let's just do M read files. Okay, well that didn't do anything. Can I just test it with like a port scan? Oh, error and string. Okay, maybe I'm gonna do it manually because I don't know what it's doing. <clears throat> so instead, let's look at some like SRF Windows files. Let's just throw some Let's throw some uh, payloads in here. I'll show you guys the cool automate feature in Kato. So we know we have localhost. We could try some of this stuff. Okay, let's try to read Etsy host of Windows. Isn't it like window C Windows Etsy host? I think it's C Windows Etsy host. Windows System Layer 2 drivers Etsy host. So what if we do this? No, let's do file. I want to see if this works. So it'd be file.
Okay, that didn't do anything. But it gave us this back. Why would it give us that back? I'm missing something really obvious. Maybe if we just do PHP, it's rendering on the page. What if I just upload a PHP shell? I think I'm overthinking this. So if we do like, oh, uh, where's PHP reverse shell pen test monkey, kind of the standard. Let's grab this. What if I just upload this because it's rendering on the page and maybe it will get lucky and it will render the actual or execute the actual PHP. listener open did this find anything no okay and python 3 m server 80 sudo all right let's try that 10.10.40.10 shell.php no didn't work Reverse shell isn't just for uh, Linux, Shivandra. You do reverse shells on Windows too. Oh, Her Risto, you and I had the same thought. <laughs> Hosting a PHP reverse shell in Python yeah, will do the job. I thought the same thing. Nixon said, I don't get why you confirm SSRF based off index.php. So I confirm that because in order to prevent SSRF, generally speaking, uh, you take away so the, the machine can't hit local host. The fact that we could hit local host and read index.php shows me that we have file read, that we have the system itself reading itself, which is kind of the, what SSRF is in uh, a very confusing way to explain it. So if we do localhost index.php we have file read there right we could do sound of weird that's my heater I might blow up on stream I really want to get that include stuff uh, Con.php doesn't like exist. Oh my goodness. What were the other files that were there? If we look at our notes. I and mean, we could just try like scripts.php. So it seems to be hitting those, but it's not, it's not revealing them to me yeah I was hitting localhost you're right that's why I wasn't hitting like the URL so it was it was scanning itself for sure so we know that so let me think of what we can do with SSRF maybe I just need to slow down so we have this some functions such as file get contents except URLs as input that they will follow making possible SSF vulnerabilities if they use control the data so we already know we have SSRF so that's actually not that helpful. Um, let's look at our beginner guide. So yeah, we can do port scans. We tried doing file read. I want to get RCE, but Yeah, so that's just, that's very much what we have. And we could probably do that. Like if we do, uh, oh, 
okay, we don't get the output, but. The web application is deployed on Windows Server using the file protocol. You can use file, drive letter, path to file. So, what was Etsy host? Full path. Oh, maybe I should get my things right though. Windows system 32 drivers at C hosts. Oh, look at that. So we do have file read. We can read Etsy hosts. I'm actually going to put that back in there so I can take it for my notes. So this is our payload right there. Now, now we might, might get somewhere. I just had to get my syntax right. Okay, so we have full file read, and we know the path of some of this stuff. So now I want to see if I can hit those things. So this one was XAMP. Yeah, okay. So we can actually read con.php, but you can see there's not much there. And that shows us the, the SQL query, but it's not giving us any type of creds there. So if we look at what are we running? Apache. Let's ask our handy dandy friend Cato. Oh. Oh, assistant is what I wanted. What is the default location for um, configuration and credentials of Apache? Well, let's just try this. So he's saying, Could you, sorry, haircut fish, stupid Twitch blocks the last word. Could you LS the C users? Not with this, not with a file. Like, I don't think that would work. We have to actually specify a file. Let's do, so actually if we pull up my notes here, I think I have some notes on this. Wouldn't it be that? I thought I recorded notes on like password hunting because I think that's what we need to do. Unless we can get, with file, can we get RCE? Um, I think we can just get file read.
Okay, well we have we have full file read. I'm just trying to think of the best files to read. I can't read the user flag because I don't know the name of the user. But I also want to get a shell. So we're gonna do like uh, let's ask. Let's ask Kato. So we would need a path. That's kind of what I figured. We basically have file read. Let's do like <clears throat> LFI windows interesting files. This might be interesting. this nope so we have my sequel stuff I don't think this will work either wait what am I doing with my life guys let's freaking automate this <laughs> Let's go to replay, uh, intercept I should say, turn on interception, do scan, send this over to automate. Although I don't remember if we have workflow built into this. I actually requested this from Kato. So in burp, in burp you can build it in so there's a workflow here. I don't think there is here. So I might actually have an issue if it doesn't auto encode it. Let's try, which one did I say worked? Let me pull up my notes. I just wanna see if this will auto encode it when I send it over or if I have to encode it. If I have to encode it, it's not gonna work with Kato. If anything, I'd have to switch over to burp, which I can, I just don't like to use burp on stream because I understand a lot of people don't have burp pro, which limits it quite a bit. So let's see if I can get to work this way. Or I might just look at the walkthrough and figure out what obvious freaking thing am I missing? Because I guarantee you it's something obvious and simple and I'm overthinking it like usual on a CTF. Oh cool, no, it does read it. All right, sweet. So now if we send this over to automate and we wanna highlight this right there will mark that and if we go over to our LFI cheat sheet let's just check all these files see if there's anything interesting here the way we can do that we'll do pluma save that and go over to Kato go to files browse Hack the box, love, open, and I'll go to automate. And our file is going to be Windows Files, and we'll hit start. Not looking good so far. Nope, they're all the same length. Oh, we have we have some longer ones okay let's see what these longer ones are <clears throat> so what was this we have errors log okay so we're able to read errors log so this is just server certificate stuff this is showing the actual command line process at starting this but you do see the Apache directory there but do we have any authentication in here? I 
I don't think so. Okay, and what's this one? Oh, it got access log? Did we just do our syntax wrong? Okay, so what is the access log on this web server? We have a lot of index, we have dashboard. This is all from me, apparently. Oh yeah, this is all for my scanning, guys. This is from GoBuster scans. That's what all that is. So that's what a GoBuster scan looks like if you're looking at logs. Is it all just me? No one else. No admin logging in with their credentials. It's all just my IP. I know we could grep it out, but that's what it looks like. Still cool that we're able to read all these uh, logs with SSRF, showing the power of SSRF. Uh, generally, in a real-world environment, we would be able to see, like, maybe a post request with credits being passed in the URL or something, and we could steal some credentials. But those are the only files that return anything more than just standard, hey, there's nothing here. All right. What's your guys' ideas? <clears throat> Checking out LinkedIn. Good morning, Benjamin Jones. Thanks for hanging out. Nixon said, and true to the file pass, what I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, and like, so I have Burt Pro, obviously. I use it at work. But the reason I don't use Burt Pro on stream is because things like Intruder are so rate limited, they're almost unusable. Kato, I do have a paid version of Kato. I bought it to support the devs, it's really affordable. But even with the free version of Kato, you can do automate and everything without any type of rate limiting, up to 64 threads, I believe. So it's just a lot more accessible for free. But it lacks some of the features, but they're actively working on it. And I like the way Kato works, and I like the chat GPT built into it. You can, of course, do all this stuff yourself, but I like to support devs when, when given the opportunity. But looking at this, it must not be a file read that's going to give us access. What about Zap? I don't use Zap. I've used it before. So my only issue with Zap, and this is a very like superficial issue, is when I use OWASP Zap, I feel like I'm in a 90s version of MySpace. I literally just don't like the UI. It's sloppy. So is Burp Suite. Like, guys, look at this. Isn't Kato just pretty? Written from the ground up in Rust, like, I love their color scheme. I love the simplicity of the UI. Zap, I feel like I'm in MySpace. Burp Suite, I feel like I'm in GeoCities, bro. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I like the way Kato looks. I hope Kato gets all those features and takes over, but Burp is still king. So they must have removed, you know, like they said, here's a vulnerable code in session. When we do session, there is, this isn't there. So the creator of the machine must have caught this and removed it. So that's not the way in either. Uh, where are credentials stored for this? Well, you know what? How long have I been going? An hour and 13 minutes and I'm still kind of stuck on this spot. I think we successfully identified like the way in. It's gonna be SSRF. And it must not be file read. Where is it storing our files at? Huh. This had this I thought this thought. It's taking our files. Where is it storing them at? Would be my one question. Because if it's scanning it, it's processing it. Where are they being processed at? Because if we can upload a PHP web shell and we know the location of it, we can then use SSRF to trigger our web shell or our reverse shell. So where would it be? uploading that is free file scan or something legit haircut fish said from the logs you can see that buster used the git request and was successful could you use that to list directories or files i don't think so i mean we could do it that's what i was kind of trying to do with intruder we'd have to specify every file that we're trying to list i mean technically possible but I don't think the intended way, if that makes sense. Is FFF scan a real thing? Is 
secure f free file scanner. I want to know if this is a real thing. Maybe I'll search for this. Maybe it's not. Okay, how about um, vhost location? If we tell our assistant, let me pull up our notes when we had the full path. The full path to the If we can read beta.php is what I'm thinking. I'm not asking how to do it. I wonder if that is the document root. If we can read staging and specifically if we can read beta.php, we could see where it's storing the files and then we could upload a uh, reverse shell, PHP reverse shell, and then use SSRF to hit the PHP reverse shell, and I think it would execute. Dang it. That doesn't work. How am I doing on time for my son comes home from preschool? All right, we got, we got time to figure this out. <clears throat> okay. I want to see what obvious thing I'm missing. Didn't I? Oh, here it is. Okay, don't look, don't look. We don't want to see the beginning spot. We just want to see what we're stuck at. Oh, we have to hit a different port that's running. So we need, did I not see port 5,000? Let's look, where did I miss out on my notes? Oh shoot, you know what? That's right. I remember when we were doing the machine, inmap was taking a long time, so I put it here like, hey, enumerate these ports, and I never went back to enumerate them. So that was my lack of going back to my to-do list, and you can see we have port 5,000 open here. So what they are doing We'll close it now. Let's struggle our way through it together. They're hitting port 5000. I should have thought about that. So when we see SSRF, I mean, we have full file read. That's cool in and of itself. In my opinion, that would have made sense to be able to discover credentials. And maybe we still can. It's just, you know, we're doing it blind. We're not sure where to hunt for those credentials at. So that was still cool. And we discovered that on our own. And it was a good learning process. What they are doing is stuff like this. Uh, because if we go to love.hackthebox port 5000, we get permission denied. But because through SSRF, it's coming through a trusted host, we have a password dashboard. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I told you guys I was overthinking that. Vote admin creds. So now we can log into the, uh, the admin dashboard. I want to get that for my notes though. In my opinion, I know the box creator won't watch this. It's a cool box. In my opinion, this is less realistic than using the file read that we found and getting credentials that way. So it'd been cool to store the credentials like in an Apache configuration or like in the access log. I think that would be um, quite realistic, but this is cool as well. It's a server that is only accessible from local hosts, but then why would it be internet facing, right? Would be my question, but still cool. Love is in the air. So let's pull that to our notes. And we'll just keep it on this HTTP, even though it's port 5000. And we'll copy this just so we don't have to type it every time. So we know it's admin. Love is in the air. 
so does that do anything now if we log in to love.hackthebox.admin? Okay, that's cool. Okay, and now, now we can get RCE, I'm almost certain. Uh, we have this voting system stuff. So this, it said it, it's in the admins, the candidate ad, according to this. So candidates, new, I see. So now if we do parrot, hack the box, love, shell. Get our shell listening platform, shouldn't really matter. I'm curious what this request looks like, save. There is no item in the list. What do you mean select? Oh my goodness. that really work <laughs> you guys like my freaking elite javascript skills there yeah that clearly i'm elite hacker obviously oh no we almost had it oh guys it's looking for linux i think um but look at that we we actually have it here Target machine actively refused it. <clears throat> so we, we had a connection there. Let's just upload a web shell. Just something like this. Did I, did I save that replay? Yeah, I did, okay, cool. So I could just copy this. What up, Justin Gold? Thanks for stopping in, my friend. Have a good Monday. Okay. Ooh, which one is it? Cannot execute a blank command. So it's trying to execute the command right away. I can't just web shell it. I'm pretty sure I can. Let's try something like this. Oh, once again, I don't need to do that. I already have it in Kato. So let me get Kato pulled up. And not that Kato in Chrome replay. We'll call it shell two, just so it's easier to tell which one I'm talking about. Control V that in, send it, refresh, close out all this stuff. Look at that guys, we have RCE. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's grab that for our notes. Why are we doing bold? 
Haircut Fish said, Tyler, do you stream every Monday at this time? Can I know the dates and times you stream? No, so not usually every Monday, Destiny. Generally speaking, I stream on Wednesday evenings around 8 p.m. Uh, CST, Central Standard Time, until whenever I'm done because that's when I get my kids in bed. Today is a little bit different. Today and tomorrow, I will probably be on stream around this time. My only hobby is hanging out with my kids, and they're in school right now. And so uh, my daughter's in school all day because she's a first grader. My son's in preschool, so he's only in school for another 45 minutes or so. So I decided to jump on stream and hack some stuff. And then when he gets out of school, he and I will go to a playground and, and do some stuff outside. So today's a little bit different. I have I took PTO. I took this week off PTO from work. And you know, like a normal human being, I'm still at my computer hacking stuff because I don't have a life. So here I am. That's why I'm on right now. Justin Gold said, lol, I'm lost, but did this script kitty just copy and paste hacks? No. It's just a very simple PHP web shell written in HTML. Just to make your life a little bit easier. So we have full RCE on the machine. We know it's Phoebe. So now we can do like dir c users. And now if we do um, type c users Phoebe desktop user.txt. I bet that's the flag. There you go, I got the flag. Boom. Let's go throw that into hack the box and we have the user flag, that's an accomplishment and we can begin uh, doing some enumeration and getting a full shell on the machine. But let's let's take our flag while we have it. Yeah, dude, Justin Gold's just a hater. <laughs> I'm just playing. He's only mad, dude, because he's so bad at Counter-Strike. So he's he's upset over in the chat. All right, user flag owned. What was my difficulty rating? I mean, I kind of went on that rabbit hole of file read, but here's where I don't think all rabbit holes are bad, guys. I don't know about you, but I learned some cool stuff doing our SSRF to um, file read, being able to read all the files internally. I thought that was a fun time. So although it was a rabbit hole, we learned something in the process. And I like to say this key perspective, the only time you don't succeed at a CTF machine is if you do not learn. Even if you don't get root, even if you don't get user, if you learn something in your attempt, that is a win. Chalk it up as a win. If you look at the walkthrough like we did to not get stuck, that's a win as well. The goal is to learn, um, not, not to demonstrate our elite hacking skills. I'm just calling it not too easy just because of that rabbit hole, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> haircut said, I knew you hack the box more. I have been on THM basically. Yeah, do both hack the box and THM are good. If I were to compare the two, like THM is of course a lot better for getting started, but from my experience, the CTF side of it, so like the standalone machines and hack the box are of superior quality to try hack me for the most part i think the reason for that is hack the box for the longest time has just been ctf machines but the machines on hack the box are usually much more realistic what can drive me crazy sometimes about try hack me machines are they are very ctfe and when i say ctfe what i mean by that is very puzzly i do not like having to like de-encrypt like a freaking silly password that I found on like robots.txt after, you know, using XOR, some weird thing to do it. Like I like machines that are much more realistic and more similar to the real world. And from my experience, hack the box is much more realistic and much more difficult for their CTF machines. I do really enjoy try hack me, especially some of the guided rooms for learning and things of that sort. And some there, I shouldn't say some. There are quite a few CTF machines on TryHackMe that are solid. It's just for live streaming, I don't know what I'm going to get on, on TryHackMe on standalone machines. I know what I'm going to get on Hack the Box. I know it's going to be pretty consistent. So when I live stream, I just prefer to live stream Hack the Box, if that makes sense. Let me know if you guys disagree with me. Totally good with that. Nixon said, are the boxes on a timer? Are they unlimited? So I have a VIP sub to hack the box, which gives me access to all the machines and all the retired machines. So for me, there's really no time limit. I believe when you start one, like this machine will be on for the next 24 hours. So if we had some weird way to get persistence, we could sign off now, come on in 12 hours and keep working on the same machine. We have that 24 hours to work with. Oh, cool. Haircut Fish said, my goal is to have a write-up for every room on the SOC level one on Try Hack Me. I'm currently in the last wire stuck room in the path. That's awesome, dude. And that's where I think Try Hack Me shines is blue team side of things and like the walkthrough side of things. And I've also done a lot of Try Hack Me. I think I'm 
I mean, I'm in the glorious top 1%, which I know doesn't mean a whole lot. But I think I'm like rank 5,000 or something, so I've done a lot of try hack me. All right. Hold up, I got a text. <laughs> oh, no. It's work stuff, but I'm not at work today, so it don't matter to me. All right, we have we have our user flag. We could do, there's a lot of ways we can get a reverse shell. What I wanna do, uh, a simple way that I'll show you guys that works really well when you're doing OSCP type stuff. If we get the netcat binary, this is what I want. Let's just upload a netcat binary. It's no releases. Bro, I just want, okay, we'll do it over here. Is this guy legit? Well, of course, Windows Defender finds this dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to find it as dangerous because it doesn't want this uh, on it. So that's not a big deal. All right. I think these are fine, but who cares? We're in a VM anyways, and it's not going to run a .exe. YOLO. I wouldn't do this in a client's environment, Just just to be very clear here. Uh, we can close that. If we CP from home, parrot downloads netcat dot. I also don't know if it's 64. I guess we could check that. Um, okay, yeah, x64. We should be good. So then what I'm going to do is we will host this sudo python3 m hb server 80 which i'm already running that so that's okay that works for me we're just going to rename this web server though so i don't confuse myself and we will do cert util url cache dash f going off memory guys i might totally screw up the syntax netcat 64.exe c temp how do you guys think my memory was there? Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, it's not there. All right. Uh, I must have done it wrong. So, isn't that the syntax? Maybe I have to do that. Nah. What the heck is a syntax? You don't have to do the dot F. Okay, maybe we don't have write permissions to temp, <clears throat> but we are that Phoebe person. So maybe we can do it. See users. Gosh, I did not. I did not hit enter. Computer, you are you are lying. Desktop. Maybe if we do it there. So what if I do? Cert util URL cache dash f 10.10.14.10 netcat 64.exe to that. Oh, come on. Okay, apparently it does not want me to upload a shell. That's okay. We can do it via PowerShell, I would think. So if we do um, technically guys, we could do hoax shell. Let's try that just for the fun of it, because hoax shell can be done just straight CMD. Like here's, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. If we go to standalone listener, that's actually what I'm looking for. 
we have this crazy command right here. Show it to you guys. That might actually work. 10.10.14.10. I'm not even going to set up my listener yet. I just want to see if I get a hit. The nice thing about this is if Windows Defender is enabled, this this will bypass Windows Defender with Hulk Shell. Look at that, we got a hit. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now this is gonna be cool. We're going to grab Hulk Shell. Really? Is that like a, a parrot thing? Let's just try to do it without it. Um, Python 3 hope shell dot pi h. Okay, no, we're just gonna yellow it. YOLO. Okay, beautiful. So, what is our syntax again? Oh, was that in here? So our standalone listener Oh, we need to get Hoax Shell Listener here. Oh, which is should already be in our machine. No? Oh, there it is. Pip3 install dash R. Well, I think we already have it. So if we do Python 3, Hoax Shell. All right, beautiful. So we are going to do type. And I think it's like curl or CMD. Ah, here we go. So payload templates. Start the listener with type T to set one of the available payloads below. So CMD dash curl. Why the freak is port 8080 in use? Oh, because of Kato. <laughs> Kato listens on port 8080. So can I specify a different port? I'd assume I can. Let's just look at the help. Port. Yeah, your Hulk cell should report. Okay. So we'll do P1337. All right. Now, if we go to this, we already have our port there is 1337. And we'll go to this. Why didn't that work? Who deleted my web shell? Someone deleted my web shell. Okay, maybe they didn't delete it. No, they deleted it. What is going on? Do, do I still have access to the machine? Did someone reset the machine? I'm on Hack the Box, not Hack the Box Academy. I'm not allowed, you're not allowed to stream Hack the Box Academy. They took away my web shells. Defender caught me. I'm just trying to re-upload it. Let's just re-go through this process because command curl is going to work. The frick. We got that callback initially. And if Windows Defender is running, which I kind of doubt it. Oh my goodness. As, a wind, as an easy machine, but if it is running, this will fully bypass Defender. Even updated Defender today. Candidates. 
Okay. Strange stuff, but whatever. We still have our request. So if we go over to replay. Okay, YOLO, we're back. Full shell. Beautiful. Now we can begin some enumeration, but let's go ahead and just record in our notes what we did. <clears throat> There's a payload, and because one note doesn't have code highlighting, we'll just store it in my ghetto table. But now we have full shell. Let me look over chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. You copied the space. Yeah, I know I did when I entered the password. <laughs> cool thing. So LinkedIn, let's see how everyone on LinkedIn is doing. All is good. Okay, cool. Let's do some uh, post exploitation enumeration. We can make this big now. So what do we got here? We have Phoebe and administrator. So we're going to have to elevate our privileges. Now, a few things that I'm actually very curious about is if we CD back to the root directory, dir. Wow. Okay. So CD Apache. I want to know was where it was storing those files at. So here's our Apache type stuff. We have a, a config directory. We have logs. We have include. So these are all those files we saw before. Oh, plus some. Okay, all default kind of Apache stuff from what I can see. So this is like your default configuration here. Sometimes there's creds in here. I don't think there is here though. <clears throat> Time is it? I want to finish this before my son gets out of preschool. 10 o'clock. Um, maybe I'm wasting my time looking at this stuff. I was just curious. I was also curious where the VHO stuff was. But that was in a different area. Wasn't it? Yeah, HT docs. That's what I'm trying to get to. Duh. So there's that index.php, applications.html. We have a password manager, which must have been where we got. That's running on port 5000. Webalizer XAMP. That's what I was looking for. What's this? So this is that beta.php. So we're reading the file. Um, Specify the file name. <clears throat> just reading the file and curl, it's just curling it and then executing it and then closing it. So I don't think it's actually storing it anywhere. Okay. Well, with that being said, let's do uh, like win piece. Zach said he's leaving. Peace out, Zach, dude. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, there is no temp. That's why I couldn't write to temp, guys. That makes sense. Oh. In 
Windows. Um, touch. How do you touch in Windows? <laughs> uh, echo. Okay, I just want to make sure I had, uh, write permissions there. So let's grab WinPeace. We'll do WinPeace x64.exe. Open up our web server. CD to hack the box and love uh, CP from home parrot downloads. Oh, it's still downloading. Done now. Why is it still downloading? Don't bro. Chrome. Why you do that to me, dude? I'm on Parrot OS. I want to download the dangerous files, you silly. Let's see if Firefox gives me more freedom. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, thank you, Firefox. You know what's up. Silly Chrome thinking it knows what's best for me. I already have web server hosted. Okay, so it's winpeas x64.exe. So let's go and copy that, go over to our shell, and we'll do cert util URL cache f 10.10.14.10 10 .10 that. Uh-oh. What's it doing? Did my shell break? Or was it just taking a while to download? Oh no, I did it wrong. Ignore that, guys. I think I have to specify the path. Or like that. Yeah. I hope it runs. Or maybe Defender really is on the machine and Defender will catch it. Do, 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 do. You know, there's some basic things I didn't check though. We didn't check like very basic enumeration, guys. What are we doing with our lives? We don't need to do WinPeas yet. First of all, WinPeas isn't even gonna run apparently. We need like, who am I priv? Maybe we have like put some potato privileges. Know what I mean? I'm just going to start this session anew. We know how to get um, our stuff. So if we go back to our notes, we can very easily get right back to where we picked up. Oh, no. What happened? I broke Hoke Shell. How did I break Hoke Shell? All right, let's do this. Let's stop this from running. Let's change the port. Don't know why that would matter, but we're gonna do it. And then we'll copy our sweet hoax shell. You know, if I could learn how to use a keyboard. Shoot, it's okay. Exception occurred during processing of request.
You guys saw this. This is all just working. What the heck changed? I just had a full shell, and I told you guys, no big deal. We'll just close it out and go back to it. So I don't think it's actually anything with hoax shell, because, like, it was just working. Is it this port that it doesn't like? Well, that sucks, doesn't it? Well, we can check what I'm thinking up here. Anyways, we have RCE. That's all I wanted to check. And that answers my question. I was hoping we would have like impersonate privilege. If you ever do this and you see impersonate privilege, you should immediately think like, hey, I have uh, a potato attack that I'm able to do with the potato attack. We can abuse some cool stuff and, and get uh, admin. But we don't have the impersonate privilege. Well, that's fine, guys. I think this might be actually a good stopping point because my son's going to be out of preschool pretty soon. That's number one. But number two, we were able to at least get user.txt, and we were able to get a full shell on the machine. I think there's just something weird with the way I shut down my initial session, which is why it's breaking like this. I'm pretty sure when we boot the machine back up, we'll be right back on it and be right back where we picked up off. If not, we'll figure out a different way to get a shell. But I think this is a good stopping point. We got a lot of work done in this stream. We did more enumeration. We abused SSF, S, SSRF to get full file read on the underlying machine. Then we used the same thing to hit port 5000, which is apparently a password manager. We got the clear text password. We logged in on the voting portal as admin. We abused RCE. Well, we did it ourselves, which is cool. We read the exploit, but I manually did it. It told me, hey, you can't leave like whatever in the list. So I did delete JavaScript skills by right click inspecting and just added something there. And it worked to my surprise. And we're able to upload a shell. We have full RCE with the web shell, had full reverse shell and have user.txt. So in the next stream, we will work on enumeration and privilege escalation. So here's my plan. If you guys want to join me, I will be back again tomorrow morning around the same time, starting a little bit after 8, 8 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, because that's when I get my kids dropped off at school. When I get home, I'll boot things back up. We will dive back into this machine and we will finish it off. So if you want to see the next part, see us struggle through. I'll be back tomorrow. Do you want to just say a special thank you to all of you who took the time to hang out with me this morning and joining? Make sure I'm not missing any questions. If you have questions about cybersecurity, pen testing, anything like that, feel free to sound off in the chat and I'll do my best to answer it before I sign off. But it looks like everything is good. Everyone's just saying thank you. So thank you guys. I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.